Hey everybody, my favorite battery company, Watt Cycle, has started their Black Friday sales and we've got two really great ones right now. First, we've got the 12 volt, 314 amp hour, non-Bluetooth, on sale for $3.99 and you can stack my discount code on top of that to take this thing down to $3.60. That is an amazing price that we haven't ever seen before, particularly for something of this capacity. The second great deal is the big boys, the 12 volt, 628 or 12 volt 314 which is basically two of these bolted together in a metal case with bluetooth are 999 and again you can stack my code on top of that so you've got three different options for some big 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 capacity at some great pricing so if you ever wanted to build a power station for yourself this is a very inexpensive very easy way to do it you take your battery you take your inverter of choice, drop it on the top, connect wires down to the battery terminals, and you're ready to rock and roll. I've made multiple videos on how to do this. If you're in an apartment or some other place where you're really space and weight constrained, this is a great way to give you a couple of days worth of battery backup. We've got winter coming to most of the planet right now. It's Texas, it's still 90 degrees here, but it's coming. So you can have a lot of power in a really tight package. I always recommend that you buy two. So having two 12 volt batteries gives you a bunch of options. You can either parallel them for 12 volts or series them for 24 volts. I'm a big fan of 24 volt systems. I've made multiple videos on why, but by having two, you can get a lot of flexibility. Again, you can stack my discount code. So two batteries will take you to just over $700 for 8,000 watt hours of capacity. So compare that against any pre-made system on the market, Ankler, EcoFlow, whatever, there's no way you're gonna get 8,000 watt hours for $700. Yeah, you've got the price of the inverter and the battery charger, but that's still a ridiculous price. Speaking of chargers, Watt Cycle's got them also. We got a big boy here. The wires just go onto the bolt terminals here to recharge the thing. This is a 60 amp, which is, you're gonna need a big charger if you wanna recharge this battery at uh, any reasonable speed. So check out the links down below for some great pricing, some discount codes. The rest of my video will recap some of the past builds that I've done. Thanks everyone, catch you on the next one. Hey everyone, today we're gonna build a very, very powerful portable power station, and I'm only gonna use a screwdriver. This is gonna give you a lot of capacity and a real small package. Check this out. This is a Renology 700 watt inverter that uh, surges to 1400 watts, which means that it'll be enough to kick on the startup surge of your refrigerator or chest freezer. Not sponsored. A Little bit of Velcro. We've got these jumper leads that came with the inverter. I prefer something a little shorter and a little bigger, but for this low capacity, it'll be just fine. Get some shorter ones if you want. We'll slide the little cap back over the inverter. Put the little cap on it. Slide the cap back. It comes with two sets of M8 screws, a shorter set and a longer set. You're gonna to wanna to use the longer set because we're gonna put two ring terminals on one bolt. So I got the harness for my battery charger. Put my little caps on. And now for my secret weapon. Furniture dolly from Harbor Freight, about 20 bucks. Cargo strap. And guess what? You're done. So now you have a portable power station with over 3,500 watt hours of battery capacity with a 700 watt inverter that'll kick to 1,400 watts so I can run my refrigerator or my chest freezer for two or three days. It's on a cart with wheels. 
It weighs about 50 pounds, so I can pick it up and move it around. I got my AC charger over here to recharge it when I get my power back. And it took me five minutes and a screwdriver. Not bad. So, why do I like this battery so much? Obviously, it's really, really, really small. I know this thing doesn't look real pretty with the wires hanging out of the back of it, but you can easily make or order shorter ones to kind of neaten this up. But this took me five minutes to build and with just a screwdriver and will save you hundreds of dollars over buying something pre-made. I can run my refrigerator or my chest freezer for two or three days on this, you know, depending. So if you like this idea, I'll put some links down below. Thanks. Catch you on the next one. Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about a 12 volt versus a 24 volt solar system. There's pros and cons, but I think that a 24 volt system is superior and I'm going to walk you through the three different factors involved. Ready? Let's take a look. So these are my latest two systems. On the right, you can see I've got a 12 volt, 300 amp hour battery on a 1200 watt inverter. And on the left, I have a 24 volt, 200 amp hour system. So on the right, we've got 3800 kilowatt hours. And on the left, we've got 5120 kilowatt hours. So they're fairly similar in system capacity size. We've also got a 1200 watt inverter, but let's see what the advantages are. The primary advantage to a 24 volt system is that as voltage goes up, current goes down. I can use a four gauge wire instead of a two gauge wire and get the same amount of current being pulled through the system and not worry about it getting hot. So I get to save money on my wire size. This is both a cost saving measure and also just sort of a safety issue. If you watch my test video on my 12 volt 300 amp system, I noted that this wire was starting to get a little warm. It wasn't hot, but it was warm. The current will be half as much on a 24 volt system. So let's plug in an identical load and I'll show you how this works. Got my little $20 space heater uh, aiming out into the garage because it's 100 degrees right now. Let's plug it in and see what the current draw is. So at 1,000 watts on my 12 volt system, I'm pulling 75 amps out of my 12 volt. It's a fair amount of current. And I'm pulling exactly half that on my 24 volt. So exact same load, exact same device, and I'm only pulling 36 amps. That's much, much, much more reasonable. There's another factor that people don't really talk about or think about all that much on a 24 volt system, and that's your solar charge controller. If you look behind me, I'm using a rich solar for both. One is a 20 amp and one is a 40 amp. However, if you look really closely at the technical specs, you can see that on a 24 volt system, you can put twice as many, twice as much wattage through the system than you can on a 12. So I get free capacity just by going to a 24 volt system. I'm using my 40 amp charge controller on my 12 volt system and my 20 amp charge controller on my 24 volt system, but I can put the same amount of panels on each of them. Since you, your charge controller is rated on amperage, not on voltage, by pushing the voltage up, I can get more total wattage through the system. So you can have more power sort of for free or buy a slightly large, a small, slightly smaller charge controller, which I wouldn't recommend. The price difference is, you know, 30 or $40, but I can get more power into the same size charge controller just by bumping the voltage up. 
I can get 1100 watts of solar through my 40 amp controller and on 24 volts instead of 550 watts on 12 volts. Okay, so you're probably thinking, what about 48 volt systems? Let's take this all the way. Really popular uh, videos on YouTube have an EG4 rack mount battery uh, with an inverter on top of it on a car like what I'm showing. 48 volt systems have all of those same kind of advantages with one crucial disadvantage. It is true that you can pull more power out of a 48 volt system with a lower amperage so you can use a smaller wire size but there's one really crucial limitation and that is the solar input for a 12 or 24 volt system you only have to give it around 35 to 40 volts on solar that really means two solar panels two residential panels that are 35 volts put together should be enough on the rich solar, their maximum solar input is 100 volts. That's the most you can put into it. That's two, maybe three panels, and then you'll end up burning the charge controller out. So 100 volts is the maximum, 35 volts is the minimum. So it's two to three panels. On a 48 volt system, the minimum amount of voltage that you have to give it is 120 volts. That means in a perfect world with full sun, that's four panels minimum. In the real world, it's going to mean six or maybe eight because you're never going to get full voltage out of them unless it's perfectly clear outside with no clouds. So for a small emergency you know, backyard system, you're going to have to have a lot of panels just to kick the 40, 48 volt system on. Whereas on a 12 or 24, you can get away with fewer and smaller ones. You might be thinking this is really complicated, but it's not. You're just wiring two batteries together. Here are my two 12 volt, 200 amp hour batteries. And they're just looped together right here. So this becomes the, the negative, this becomes the positive, and this becomes one battery. However, LilyPulse actually makes a 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery in one piece. If you check out the link below, you can buy them separate or you can buy one massive battery that you treat like anything else. It would be wired just like this. You wouldn't have the loop in between because it's just one piece. One of the other things people will ask about is, well, what about my 12 volt devices? You know, I've been doing this for a couple of years and I'm really struggling to think of a 12 volt only device that I really, really, really want to have that I wouldn't just run off the inverter. There are two exceptions that I can think of a 12 volt RV refrigerator or a CPAP machine using a 12 volt converter. They are going to run more efficiently going DC-DC because you don't have the losses of the inverter. It's not that big of a deal. They make 12-volt uh, step-downs that you can just wire on top of this and get 12 volts out of it. This is what they look like. This is a little one that I use for some solar stuff. And you just take 24 volts in over here and you get 12 volts out over here. So you could just bolt this to this wood beside wire in line with the inverter and get your 12 volt out so you can run your RV fridge or your CPAP or whatever. One of the other things to keep in mind with a 12 volt only system is making sure that you get a big enough BMS. On larger batteries, 200 amps and greater, it's not so much of a big deal anymore, but you have to look really closely at cheap batteries for a 100 amp BMS versus a 200 amp BMS. If your 12 volt battery has a 100 amp BMS, the most power you can pull out of that thing is 1000 watts because it's a factor of 10. You want to have a 200 amp BMS or greater if you want to more, pull more than 1000 watts. Since I have two 12 volt batteries, both with 200 amp BMSs on them, that means I could pull over 4000 watts out of this thing if I really wanted to. 
I don't see any reason why I think 1,000 to 1,500 is more than enough, but you could. 1,500 watts or so will kick on my chest freezer, run my refrigerator, and get over the startup surge of a window AC unit if I really wanted to do that. Lily Poles has got a bunch of really great deals going on, so make sure you check out the links below. These things are always going on sale. So if you wanna go 12 volts, they have a 300 amp monster. If you wanna go 24 volts, they have a 24 200 amp system also. So check them out down below. I hope that this was helpful for you. So uh, thanks everyone, and we'll catch you on the next one. And if you enjoyed this, please uh, give me a thumbs up and a like, and uh, put a comment down below. Thanks everyone.